Ryan Prager, uh, Justin Lampkin, and Shane Sadeo will be the starters this weekend. Hey, friends, it is the Tech Sacks Rewind. Which one of us three upset the entire community with their thoughts on Aggie basketball? <clears throat> Just my positivity. <clears throat> I asked for three reasons, yes. and you didn't give me one. No, I, I gave I, you one. I mean, I, you said the tournament. I said yeah. NIT. Yeah. He, 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 <laughs> I, he, did, he did open the floor up for positivity, <laughs> and uh, uh, Sutton chose violence today. <laughs> So, but today was still a lot of reflection on the Elko interview. Yeah, great uh, interview. Really, like I said, really, really gets the uh, rose colored or the maroon colored glasses uh, shined up. And I just uh, wish you guys would invite him more often. Well, (laughs) I wish you would come more often. Caitlin Torn, what was your favorite part of the show today? Um, I liked the call we got in this morning. Uh, Definitely the fan show. And um, I liked Schloss a lot today, too. Yeah, we had Schloss on there. It was good stuff. We had the fan show guys on here. We had a bunch of coaches coming by the studio. We had Aaron Torres on here. We had Logan Lees, all that. And a bag of chips is the Tex Hacks Rewind. But something he said yesterday struck with me, especially when I'm reading this note that our producers put together on our show packet. It says Aggies uh, in the NFL draft. Five Aggies invited to the 2024 NFL scouting combine. The names, you should know them. Anaya Smith, Layden Robinson, McKinley Jackson, Edron Cooper, and Damani Richardson. And I want to spend some time talking about those guys. But one of the things that Coach Elko said yesterday was that don't judge us on the right now, right? Like, um, obviously, it's results business. But judge us, like, how many guys we get to the NFL because that'll tell you yeah. the kind of caliber of program that we're putting together. And I think, I, maybe my memory serves me incorrect. I think he said, you know, if we get 18 guys in the, in the NFL draft or in the, in the NFL, that tells you something. i sure like to see that number. Well, I, I wonder if... I doubt he means 18 guys all in one draft. Right, right, right. right? right. But Maybe at have, one time. If you have 18 guys on your team that, on a specific team that went and, you know, was drafted. Over a four-year period, or three-year yeah, period, whatever, yeah. Because yeah. uh, that's a lot. Um, that said, I mean, there's been some drafts, A&M, you know, especially back in the 90s, we probably, probably had 10 guys drafted. Yep. You know, well, in fact, it wasn't uh, that long ago, right? It wasn't that long ago, the year with Colin Gillespie. Yeah. Jimbo's first year. Uh, but you'd like to see a lot of them in the first and second round, you know? Because I think part of the, because I think the the thing that sparked the question was, it's not just about the stars, it's about getting the right fit in your program. And then he took it and went an extension to that of what how I understood it was developing these guys to be NFL players. Just because you've been anointed this five-star who walks on water, right? right? does not guarantee you path into the NFL. But just because you're a three-star does not mean you won't <laughs> find your way to the NFL. We're g- you probably have it in you, and we're going to help uncover it. Yeah, a lot of times, and I've said this many times, and I believe this, you, those talented three-star guys are more valuable than some, because a lot of five-star guys show up with uh, entitlement. Yep. Uh, boy, don't we know it, right? We do know and it. And then you get a lot of three-star guys that show up with uh, an edge to prove themselves. Ryan Prager, uh, Justin Lampkin, and Shane Sadeo will be the starters this weekend. And uh, just talk about, I guess, uh, the preparations for those three getting into to this first weekend, what you've seen from them. Uh, yeah, yeah, they've all thrown uh, really well. Um, as I, I think we've talked about, at least I've talked about somewhere, uh, Tanner Jones, the guy we have a lot of hope for, uh, he was just a, nothing serious. He's just a little behind everybody else because he had some <clears throat> super minor uh, issues, at least minor to this point. He throws a <clears throat> full-on bullpen today um, and should be available to pitch in an inning or two, maybe next weekend. But uh, Shane has really stepped up and and thrown a ton of strikes and had, has has made some good adjustments with uh, Coach Weiner and and so he's kind of grabbed that third spot. Uh, Cortez threw great the other night. Uh, all the games count, <clears throat> but Prager has kind of stepped to the forefront and given his uh, age and experience and intelligence and everything that goes with him. Uh, you know, we'll give him the ball first, but you know, sometimes people read a lot into that. But uh, all the games are important, and uh, we'll, uh, something about the rotation of the earth. Uh, left-handers seem to get people out uh, at a better rate than right-handers. So we'll, we'll see if that doesn't work for us. 
I know you mentioned Tanner earlier. Just uh, is is he somebody you think we'll be seeing here fairly soon, or we're just still a TBD with him? Yeah, I think I think if all if all things hold true, he's going to throw on the mound today um, at a high at a higher rate than he has thrown in terms of effort and uh, length, and then maybe do that one more time next week. And if all feels great, uh, then we'll throw him uh, next weekend. But if you look at the totality of what's left of the schedule. I don't know. I, I don't know what's if beating Tennessee is means than, more hmm. than losing to Vanderbilt. I think the loss to Vanderbilt probably hurts them more than the win over Tennessee. Uh, that's bad. I, I do. So here, here's the schedule. You've got at Bama, home versus Arkansas, to Tennessee. You host South Carolina, and I and I think. That's a, that's a must win in my opinion. Man, that's a that's a tough game too. Georgia on the road, tough. Tough. Home versus Mississippi State. It's a win. And then on the road to Ole Miss. And I don't know, like that's Ole Miss, huh? What's that? I think that's a win. I, th- I think the two Mississippi games would be a win. It, you didn't beat them at home. Yeah, but I I I just maybe that's maybe that's the the hope talking, yep. uh, and and the belief that this team is going to something's going to click and they're going to be able to be consistent. You look at, at the way that they played against Kentucky, the way that they just completely dominated Tennessee in all facets. Yeah, they did. I mean, they, they, okay. they took care of Tennessee in every which way, choked them out, didn't let them come back. There was no, oh, Tennessee made a run and made it close. I that didn't on, happen. I kept on waiting for that run to happen. I thought it was going to happen too at some point. And, and I thought with the lead that they had that – a and M was going to be able to hold on, and really, I didn't think that they were after after the first four minutes of the second half. I didn't think that that A and M was going to lose that game at all. However, Vandy changes my entire thought process of the season, and so Alabama's tough. Arkansas, you have to win at man playing at Tennessee after what you did to them <laughs> at Reed Arena. Not, I mean, that's a tough game. So That's a really tough game. You win the games you're supposed to win the rest of the way at this point. We played this game last week. We'll play it again here. Yeah, but which games are they supposed to win? You're supposed guess, to beat Arkansas. You're supposed to beat Arkansas. You should beat Georgia. You should beat Mississippi State. I mean, you should. That's three more wins. That gets you at nine. That doesn't get you in the tournament. You need Man, another one. Yeah. I was at I was at Tennessee. Great electric atmosphere. We took them to the woodshed. Yep. Um, even chanted overrated, which I, I didn't particularly I did. like. I, I chanted. Yes, I, I chanted. I chanted. I didn't particularly like that part. I, I don't mind rubbing it in Rick Barnes, Rowdy Rick's face oh, a little absolutely. bit, but I'm one of those. I, if you're going to do it to a team that's that's that is better than you. You know, I mean, why why take away from your? It doesn't victory? take it away. It's just the same. Oh, it's yeah, great. I agree. Like, agree but if it's somebody taunting. yells at LeBron James, "You suck!" Yeah. The, all of a sudden, does the entire crowd like? You know what? They're no. right. He no, I, no, I agree. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm changed my mind. I'm, no. I, but I'm a big fan. Like had that been Texas that came in and their numbers, you want to you want to rub it in their face, but. Um, um, and by the way, if you get a chance, make sure any of your UT of your your Texas fans, you te- you text them. Anytime you can about Tennessee, call them UT. Yeah. That will drive them bonkers. It's the best ever, by the way. But to go and win that game, you beat a scrappy Missouri team. You you beat a, a hot Florida team all in a row. We think this is it. The it, it's the tables have turned. Here we go. And the tables, the tables did turn. The late <laughs> tables did turn. I just it's just mind boggling. I, I don't quite understand how you the roller coaster ride. You know we've talked about it. You we every year. Under the buzz, under buzz, we've had we'll have down times and then we'll have up times. This time they're shorter. The the roller coaster, the the the, the ups and downs are, are closer together than they have been in the past. Yeah. So that was a tough one and uh, um, confusing to say the least. Yeah, I think the from a basketball standpoint, the I, I, we are um, either a really good team or a really bad team, and when that doesn't win you tournament games, you have to be consistent. Um, and I actually, it kind of reminded me of um, our good friend Jimbo Fisher that could win a really big game and then lose a really bad game. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I, I, you guys asked Buzz um, in the press conference, you guys asked Buzz on the radio about trap game. Oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that. By the way, that by definition, that was a trap game. 
and we got trapped. All right, Caitlin, you choose who gets to close it out. You can choose yourself, or you can choose one of these knuckleheads, no, Sutton or Matt. Y'all take it. Y'all switch off like we did last time. The closing. <laughs> uh, what do you What do you tell the people? I, I'm gonna like it. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna share it. Um, I'm going to post it other places in social media. Okay, Stop. and I'm gonna subscribe. <laughs> Stop. And I'm gonna click the notification bell. I so know I never who your friends are. Text radio. <laughs> They're not. You're going, my friend. Well, yes. All right. I have been on your Facebook page. Not once have I seen you suddenly be like, "Hey, everybody, check out this awesome show." No, you know, I don't. I know your your friend John's listening right now. But other than that, who else would you got? Okay, you're gonna do it today. Yes, on absolutely. Your Facebook page. I'll do it on my Facebook page. And then. you? Oh, I do it every time. On your Facebook John, page? When you, talk, when, you say, when you say John, you're talking about John and Cypress? Yeah. That's my guy. That's my guy. Mine too. <laughs> See you next time.